Hey guys, so this video is just going to be um, a review of one of the harder problems uh, from the banked uh, practice set and then some of the problems from the vertical circles that you were supposed to finish uh, over the weekend. So no new content. I just want to make sure that you guys are aware of how to solve some of these problems. Let's start with 25 from your uh, your angled, your banked problems because these were this was a really difficult one and I want to make sure that you can solve this. So uh, on this problem, the same radii is really important since these two curves have the same radii. And you know the fact that one is unbanked and the other is banked. So I'm going to kind of categorize things like that. Uh, and they have the same maximum speed, so V0 is shared. That's what you're going to use in both times. Uh, you are supposed to figure out what the angle is going to be so that it can have that same maximum speed. And the coefficient of friction that they give you is 0.A1. Now, the fact that they only give you one number, this is a clue that you're somehow supposed to write equations and get rid of everything basically except for mu and theta, which can be kind of tricky. So let's talk about how to do that. For the unbanked problem, your centripetal force is the force of friction. So you would write friction equals mv squared over r. Therefore, uh, mu mg equals mv squared over r. Because if you think about the car as it's driving, it'll have the weight down, the normal force up. So the normal force equals the weight. And the force of friction is your centripetal force. And the force of friction is always mu times the normal force. So you would make this mu mg. So that's where I'm getting this friction from to then turn into umg. So just like all of the unbanked problems where you have friction as your centripetal force, the mass goes away, and you're left with mu g equals v squared over r. Now I should be careful to call this v naught because that's what they label their velocity. And on the AP tests, uh, things similar to that happen where you have to use what they give the velocity for. OK, so for this banked problem, if you remember from the banked video, you are going to have an object uh, that has its weight down and a normal force where the angle of the incline belongs here. And this will be n cosine theta because it's adjacent. And then n sine theta is going to point to the left or towards the inside of the circle. Um, n cosine theta and mg, they are going to be equal to each other. And then n sine, n sine theta is your centripetal force. So you can write n sine theta equals m v squared over r. Now, if you do our fancy trick where we divide the left and the right sides by each other, then we get rid of the normal force and the mass, and we're left with this equation. Tan theta equals v, again, we'll call that v naught, squared over r g. OK, now here's where things get crazy. You know that v naught and r are shared variables. These are common to both. So what we can do is multiply tangent by r. So we get this equation right here. Now, I'm sorry, multiply tangent by g. So we get this equation right here. Now, the reason why that is special, because if you'll notice, we can set these two equations equal to each other and eliminate v naught squared over r, which is fine because we know in both situations they're equal. So what we get is mu g equals g tan theta, and wow g goes away, and you get that mu equals tangent theta. So to find the angle, you just take the inverse tangent of mu, which in this case is inverse tangent of 0.81, uh, and that will give you 39 degrees. So that was a pretty tough problem. Uh, you had to write these two separate equations and set them equal to each other, which is not so obvious. You kind of have to do some playing with that. All right, now let's take a look at uh, some of your vertical circle problems. We're going to start with 44. Now, hopefully you've already attempted 44, and so I don't have to restate it too much. Um, but essentially, you have a loop-to-loop, -loop, right, a vertical circle. And the key thing to know is that the electric sensor is basically like a scale. And what the scale is measuring is your normal force. Hopefully you get that from this sentence right here. Uh, again, anytime you're supposed to find the normal force, you can think of it as that's what a bathroom scale would read. OK, it tells you that when you are level, the scale reads 770 newtons. So that's that's actually the weight of the person. OK, the weight is 770 newtons. So if you want to find the mass of the person, the mass is going to be FG over G or 770 newtons over. We're going to do 10 
meters per second squared because it makes things a lot easier, and you get 77 kilograms. Okay, so the mass of the person is 77 kilograms. Now, at the top of the loop, it tells you that the scale reads 350 newtons. So what that is a reading of is, sorry, the normal force. So you're going to have two forces. You're going to have the normal force down, which you know is 350 newtons, but then you will also have the weight, which will be 770 newtons. From both of those forces, you are going to get the centripetal force. So n plus mg equals mv squared over r, right? Because that is the centripetal force. And so the total amount of force that you're going to have is, well, 350 plus 770, so 1120. Um, but before we do that, I'm just going to go ahead and rearrange this to solve for the velocity so that you know how you would do this. Um, you multiply both sides by r. Doing that, you need to put these two things in parentheses, so you get r times n plus mg equals mv squared, and then you divide both sides by m. And take the square root. Okay, just in case you were asked to ask uh, solve this AP style. So the radius is 21 meters. Uh, N plus mg is 1120. Then you divide that by the mass of the person, which you already found, 77 kilograms. The newton is really a kilogram times a meter per second squared, which is good because these meters are going to give you seconds squared, so the kilograms are going to cancel out, and you get meter squared per second squared, the square root, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and when you take the square root of this whole number, you are going to get 17.47, so we'll say 17.5 meters per second. So that's the velocity. All right, for 45, you have a 0.2 kilogram ball on a stick whirled on a vertical circle at a constant speed. You know that when the ball is at the 3 o'clock position, the tension is 16 newtons, and you're supposed to find the tension at 12 and 6 o'clock. So let's kind of draw that. You have your circle. And the ball is at three locations. Okay, so at each of these locations, the weight points down. But depending on where you are, tension is either pointing up or it's pointing down. Now, it tells you that at the 3 o'clock position, so that's right here, at the 3 o'clock position, your tension is 16 newtons. So it tells you tension is 16 newtons. Now why that's important is because you know that here tension is the centripetal force or that mv squared over r is 16 newtons. So then at the bottom when you say things like uh, tension, sorry, tension minus mg equals mv squared over r, well you know that mv squared over r is 16 newtons. And the same thing at the top when you have tension plus mg you know that mv squared over r is 60 newtons. The weight of the object is 0.2 kilograms right, times 10, so 2 newtons. So this would read tension plus 2 newtons equals 16 newtons, or tension is 18 newtons. Sorry. Wow. There we go. Phew. 14 newtons. Down at the bottom, you would get tension minus 2 newtons equals 16 newtons, and therefore tension would be 18 newtons. All right, moving right along. 46. A stone is tied to a string and whirled in a circle. Um, this is kind of a weird one. It tells you first the circle is horizontal and nearly parallel, so that means you don't have to deal with a conical pendulum. You can just pretend that this thing perfectly moves in a horizontal circle and that the tension is the centripetal force. Okay, so the tension is the centripetal force. Okay, then on the second problem, it tells you that it's swung vertical, so this is horizontal, then it's vertical, and the vertical force, or the vertical circle, you are told that the tension at its maximum is 15% larger than the tension when it was a horizontal circle. So at a hor as a horizontal circle, the tension was constant, and it equals mv squared over r. But over here, your tension changes, and you'll have the most tension in the string when, it is at, when it's at the bottom of the path, because you'll have the weight 
acting against the tension. So tension has to be much, much bigger than it is at any of the other places. Now, in fact, you're told that the tension here is actually 15% um, larger than the tension that it was there. So I'm going to call this uh, T nu, right? It's our new tension. And we know that it is 15% larger. So you could write that as 1.15 times T, referencing this T. Okay, or you could even say 1.15 times mv squared over r. Whatever mv squared over r is, uh, the tension there is 1.15 times it. Now that's going to be important here in a second because when you think about the centripetal force here, you're going to have uh, tension minus the weight. So the new tension minus the weight. And it's going to add up to, you guessed it, mv squared over r. So when we replace the new tension with 1, 1 1.5 times mv squared over r, we now have two terms that are similar. And so I'm going to subtract mv squared over r from both sides and add mg. So on the right, I'm going to get mg. And on the left, when I take away 1 from 1 1.5, then I'm left with 0.15 mv squared over r. Now, why is this so easy to solve? Well, they tell you the length of the string is 1.1, so that's your radius, and you get rid of m. So you are left with 0.15 v squared over r equals g. Uh, and to figure out what this velocity is, I'm going to bring it over here, you just need to multiply both sides by r, so you get uh, v squared equals gr, and then you divide that by 0.15. Then, of course, to get the velocity, you take the square root, which gives you, after you've plugged in the numbers, of course, so uh, 10 meters per second squared times 1.1 meters over 0.15, that's going to give you uh, about 8.56, so we'll say 8.6 meters per second. All right, let's do one more. Okay, so 47. Motorcycle traveling up the side of a hill, down the other. Hopefully, you were able to solve this one. It's just like the example that we did together. You want to find the maximum speed while moving over the crest without losing contact to the road. So you imagine a circle underneath of the road. Here's the motorcyclist. They're having a great time. Of course, they're in contact with the road. Here you are, motorcycle, yay, motorcycles, so much fun, woo. Um, so basically this problem is telling you that the weight is your centripetal force, so you should say mg equals mv squared over r, you get rid of the mass, and you get that the velocity is the square root of grr, or the square root of 10 meters per second squared, times the radius of 45 meters, which gives you about 21.2 meters per second. Woo! Congratulations. Yay. Sorry there are no cat gifs. Or cat gifs. Or gifs.